Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, I'd like to talk um, today uh, about um, the effects of fish oils on depression. Um, now this is quite an interesting topic nutritionally. Um, it's been shown, uh, for example, that uh, people with depression tend to have low plasma uh, and red blood cell uh, amounts of a, a, fatty, a particular fatty acid called docosahexaenoic acid. Uh, this is an omega-3 fatty acid that is found uh, in fish oils um, and it's also been shown through epidemiological studies that those people who eat more fish uh, tend to have lower, a lower risk of, of getting depressed. Um, so there is some evidence there that the omega-3 fats uh, are actually uh, may be required uh, to prevent depression or a deficiency of omega-3 fats may lead to depression. Um, this has led uh, to quite a few researchers uh, investigating the effects of fish oil supplementation um, in depressed people. Uh, and the results from these uh, studies have, have actually been quite inconclusive. So I just wanted to go over uh, the science behind this uh, and actually come to some kind of um, uh, some, to come some kind of conclusion as to why these studies might find uh, inconsistent findings towards fish oil and depression. If we go back um, to fish oils and we talk about uh, how fish oils work uh, in humans and why we need them, uh, fish oils contain uh, two particular omega-3 fatty acids. They contain icosapentaenoic acid and uh, docosahexaenoic acid. Uh, these are sometimes abbreviated to EPA and DHA. Uh, these long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids uh, are important because um, they're used uh, in humans to be able to create uh, some uh, short lived hormones called eicosanoids. Um, now this works um, in quite a complex way. I'll try and explain how uh, these eicosanoids are formed. Uh, when we take in fish oils, we take in docosahexaenoic acid and eicosapentaenoic acid. Now eicosapentaenoic acid is the direct precursor of a group of eicosanoids uh, called the series three eicosanoids. Uh, and you can also from eicosapentaenoic acid also form uh, a group of leukotrienes called the series five leukotrienes. Now these compounds uh, actually have a slight pro-inflammatory effect uh, and docosahexaenoic acid uh, is converted in the body to eicosapentaenoic acid and is therefore uh, a, pr a precursor for these eicosanoids as well. It's just uh, a step further uh, back, a couple of steps further back in the, uh, the metabolic pathway. But it acts as a reservoir for eicosapentaenoic acid which is then converted to these series 3 uh, and series uh, 5 uh, uh, eicosanoids and, uh, and leukotrienes respectively. Now they have a pro-inflammatory effect, um, but they are, in, they are able to inhibit the production of a group of very pro-inflammatory uh, eicosanoids called the series 2 eicosanoids. Uh, and these eicosanoids are formed from an omega-6 fatty acid called arachidonic acid, which can either be derived from linoleic acid uh, in the diet, it's converted in the body to arachidonic acid, or arachidonic acid can be, uh, uh, actually uh, intakes of arachidonic acid can occur from uh, foods of animal origin, such as dairy foods uh, and red meat. So the arachidonic acid and the eicosapentaenoic acid build up in cell membranes. The arachidonic acid is converted to the series 2 eicosanoids and the series 4 leukotrienes, which have a very pro-inflammatory effect. And the eicosapentaenoic acid is converted to the series 3 eicosanoids and the series 5 leukotrienes, which have a mild pro-inflammatory effect, but they use the same enzyme system as the series uh, 2 uh, eicosanoids and the series uh, 4 leukotrienes, and therefore they inhibit their production. And this means that they actually overall have an anti-inflammatory effect because uh, they decrease the production of these very pro-inflammatory eicosanoids. There is actually another series of eicosanoids which actually have an anti-inflammatory effect that also derived uh, from dietary linoleic acid uh, and they are the series 1 eicosanoids and they're actually, um, you can actually take for example uh, evening primrose oil which contains uh, gamma linoleic gamma acid uh, which is converted to these series 1 eicosanoids which have an anti-inflammatory effect and it's therefore a balancing act because Although omega-6 fatty acids have a pro-inflammatory effect, they also produce these, uh, uh, these anti-inflammatory series 1 eicosanoids, but the, the, the omega-3 fatty acids uh, have a slight anti-inflammatory effect. And this is where the dietary uh, ratio of the omega-6 to omega-3 uh, fatty acids is important. 
generally the typical Western diet produces uh, supplies too much, uh, too many of the omega-6 fatty acids. This causes a, a buildup of arachidonic acid in the cell membranes, and this causes too much of the pro-inflammatory, uh, too many of the pro-inflammatory eicosanoids to be synthesised, and this has a pro-inflammatory effect. Uh, supplementing with fish oil is a balancing act. Um, it, it's it's aimed at uh, um, restoring uh, the amount of eicosapentaenoic acid in the cell membranes uh, and this has a balancing effect on the amount of pro-inflammatory eicosanoids that are produced. Obviously ideally uh, you would want to increase your uh, amount of eicosapentaenoic acid through increasing your omega-3 fatty acids and at the same time decreasing your intake of the omega-6 fats because we, we consume too many omega-6 fats in the typical western diet and too few omega-3 fats. Now how does this relate to depression? Well uh, it is not exactly known but we do know that the brain contains lots of fat, it's made up predominantly of fat and the brain has a particular uh, need for docosahexanoic acid. Uh, a lot of the brain is made of fat and a lot of the fat within the brain is docosahexanoic acid. Now docosahexanoic acid is interesting, uh, DHA, because it also is uh, converted into a group of um, non-classical eicosanoids, we call them docosanoids, and they are the resolvins and the uh, docosatrienes. And these appear to have uh, particular effects on uh, neuronal uh, function uh, and neuronal health, uh, and they're actually called uh, a subgroup of the um, of the leuco uh, of the docosatrienes. Are actually called neuroprotectins for this reason. So do uh, docosahexanoic acid (DHA) actually has uh, specific protective effects uh, on the brain that are separate from uh, its role as a precursor for eicosapentaenoic acid. So there is a link between uh, fat and the brain, uh, and there is a very high concentration of DHA in the brain. And a lot of studies have looked at uh, the docosahexanoic acid concentration of, for example, mother's milk. Uh, they've looked at the DHA content of children and infants, uh, and it's it's really being uh, shown that the that those uh, infants that uh, are exposed to higher concentrations of DHA uh, when they're uh, in the womb and after they've been born uh, appear to have a, a lower risk of uh, some of any kind of depressive symptoms uh, and they seem to show uh, cognitive benefits of some kind. So DHA is linked to brain function which may be the link uh, there to uh, depression. Um, however if we look at the studies that have been done on actually supplementing fish oils to people with depression what we tend to find is that the results are quite inconsistent. So if we if we analyze these studies uh, and I will put a link uh, below this video uh, in the comments box uh, to two particular studies that have uh, done a review of this particular area. Um, we have Martins uh, in 2009 uh, and we have Ross in 2007 and they looked at studies that had been done uh, on supplementation of people uh, who are suffering from depression with fish oils uh, and what they found uh, was that um, really if you supplement with fish oils, there needs to be uh, a particular criteria, uh, criteria fulfilled in order for them to have a beneficial effect on depressive symptoms. Uh, the first criteria is that the, the people who are um, suffering from depression need to be suffering from uh, either bipolar depression or severe depression. Treating people with mild depression with fish oils does not seem to be that effective. So to start with the baseline characteristics of the people in the studies uh, needs to be uh, quite severe, they need to have quite severe depression. Um, secondly, uh, it's uh, the other important uh, f phenomenon that seems to come out from these, um, these studies is that um, DHA doesn't actually seem to be that effective at treating depressive symptoms. Uh, what the two papers uh, that I will put the links to show is that it's actually the EPA content of these fish oils that appears to have the effect. Um, this would suggest um, that it's possibly uh, the anti-inflammatory effects of EPA uh, and not the uh, non-classical conversion of, uh, do, uh, of DHA to the docosanoids that's possibly uh, the important factor here. Um, so. For example, those studies that looked at pure DHA, supplied just DHA, or had a very high concentration of DHA uh, in the fish oils, they tended not to show an effect. But those studies that looked at pure EPA, uh, or had a very high concentration of EPA in the fish oils, they did actually seem to show uh, an effect against depression.
So there's two things to consider. In the studies, if the subjects don't have severe depression, they tend not to benefit from fish oils. And also, if the, if the concentration of EPA is not high enough in the fish oils, uh, or you supply pure DHA, it appears not to have uh, these anti-depressive effects. Uh, and that's quite interesting. Um, another interesting thing uh, that was pointed out in these papers is... Uh, is, is to do with the sex differences. Uh, women tend to suffer from depression uh, more than men. Now you have to be very careful when you look at data uh, between the sexes for depression because women are more likely to report depression uh, a depression than men. Uh, men are much more likely to commit suicide and obviously if you've committed suicide then you, you are unable to report your depression and also men are more likely to keep their depression to themselves uh, whereas women are more likely to report it. So you must be very careful when you analyse data showing that women tend to be more depressed than men. But let's assume that women are uh, generally uh, at higher risk of depression than men. Is there a physiological reason uh, that could explain that, that fits in with these findings? And actually there is. Um, the conversion of uh, EPA uh, to, to, to DHA and, and likewise is under the control, uh, is under the uh, control of the hormone oestrogen. Uh, and oestrogen tends to uh, convert EPA to DHA and women tend to have higher levels of DHA uh, than men. Now the reason for this may be that the women uh, who are at the obviously possibility of having children may require that DHA in higher concentrations in order to be able to supply it to the growing fetus and therefore they have a physiological mechanism to maintain high levels of DHA in their plasma so that if they become pregnant that DHA can then be supplied to the fetus which requires it for brain brain formation uh, and brain development. So this may mean that women tend to have uh, higher amounts of DHA at the expense of their EPA levels uh, and that is under the control of oestrogen. Now if we uh, go back to the studies and we show that it's EPA that has the effect on depression this may explain the higher uh, amounts of uh, depress depression, the, the higher risk of depression in women compared to men. So this is a very complex issue. Um, Many, many, many people have used the uh, inconsistency in the studies to show that fish oil doesn't have an effect against depression. And I would argue that you have to be very careful when analysing these studies. Uh, there are inconsistencies in the reported data, but there are nuances that you have to look into in order to be able to fully understand it. Uh, and if you look at the meta-analysis, it does appear that EPA is the key factor in the fish oils that has a benefit. So this is in no way intended uh, to, to, to treat people. I don't want you to use this uh, as any kind of, diag uh, any kind of uh, treatment for, uh, uh, for depression. If you have depression, you really need to seek uh, medical attention. This is really just a, a, an informative look uh, at the nutritional literature to show that um, these fish oils are much more complex uh, than they appear. They contain uh, two compounds and those compounds, we don't really understand how they're, uh, how they're metabolized uh, in the brain or the body. Uh, they do appear to have anti-inflammatory effects, but we don't understand how those anti-inflammatory effects, uh, effects relate to depression. Um, but another thing that's worth pointing out is that your brain and your body uh, are connected. Uh, and if you are healthy, you are more likely to be mentally healthy. Um, it, there is no harm in taking fish oils, in balancing your uh, intake of fish oils, your, your omega-3s to your omega-6s, because this will improve your physical health. Uh, and your physical health uh, is very much related to your mental health and vice versa. Um, if you think that you're consuming too many omega-6 fatty acids, uh, the actual ratio of the omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids should be for every for about every three grams of linoleic acid which is the omega uh, which is the essential fatty acid that belongs to the omega-6 fa uh, family you need about one gram of alpha linolenic acid which is the essential fatty acid but that belongs to the omega-3 uh, family now the western diet typically provides uh, anywhere between 10 to 20 grams of a, a linoleic acid and its equivalents to only one gram of alpha linolenic acid. So there's a, a very uh, high uh, uh, amounts of omega, uh, omega sixes in the in the typical Western diet and very low amounts of omega three. One way around that, obviously, as I've suggested, is to increase your omega three fatty acid content. And one of the most uh, efficient ways of doing that is to take fish oils, uh, which bypass many of the metabolic steps and and, and supply the EPA and DHA directly. Rather Rather than having for it uh, to be converted in the body from uh, uh, plant from plant sources of omega threes, which is actually quite efficient, inefficient in humans. Uh, so taking fish oils is one way, but also look at your intake of. Um, 
of your omega-6 fatty acids that if that you think that's too high you need to bring that down as well and it's this balancing act you need to to balance your omega-6 to omega-3s and remember omega-6 fatty acids are not bad they they actually produce the series one icosanoids which have very strong anti-inflammatory effects in the body uh, and it's as soon as the ratio goes out between the omega-6 and the omega-3s that this uh, pro-inflammatory effects can actually take hold and this is typical of the western diet and this may actually be one of the causes of many western diseases and it may also be a contributory factor in depression uh, and rates of depression tend to be higher in western countries in developed countries than they are in developing countries and again this may relate to the diet the typical western diet other factors to take into account when uh, thinking about your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio are your insulin levels. Insulin uh, inhibits the conversion of some of these eicosanoids, uh, some of these uh, long chain fatty acids to eicosanoids, uh, and in particular it may actually favour the uh, production of uh, your pro-inflammatory uh, uh, series uh, 2 eicosanoids. So keep your insulin levels under control, that's also important. Um, any other factors nutritionally uh, that you need to take into account? Uh, refined carbohydrates obviously will lead to high insulin levels, so they need to be uh, removed from the diet. Um, because that will obviously increase the amount of arachidonic acid and these pro-inflammatory series 2 eicosanoids. Um, and generally you need to you need to make sure that this balance uh, in your diet is correct you need to reduce your saturated fat acid uh, saturated fatty acid levels if you think uh, that that uh, may be particularly high as well if you eat a lot of red meat because uh, again saturated fats can interfere with the uh, with the metabolism of the essential fats uh, although a certain amount of saturated fats are required in the diet they're a very good source of energy so i wouldn't ever say you need to cut out your saturated fat completely uh, and of course we get uh, a lot of uh, vitamins and minerals uh, through our meat so red meat is actually a very good source for example of iron uh, and i think that eating red meat is actually probably quite a good idea as long as it's of high quality of organic grass-fed uh, produce so there are some considerations uh, about your omega-6 to omega-3 ratios we're not entirely sure why fish oils have a beneficial effect but if you look at the literature and please have a have a read of the links below if you look at the literature what we tend to see is that it's the EPA content of the um, of the of the fish oils that have an effect uh, and really uh, fish oils are only beneficial to those people uh, who have severe depression or bipolar depression uh, from the studies anyway uh, and those people with mild to moderate depression uh, for example or those people with chronic fatigue or, or lesser uh, lesser less serious uh, depressive symptoms tend not to benefit so much uh, which is maybe what we'd expect maybe maybe studies need to include more subjects in order for those uh, people with very mild depression to actually see uh, see effects so i hope that's interesting please read uh, the, the papers below even if you only read the abstract uh, they're very informative um, and i hope this has been helpful uh, and, and just bear in mind that this is a balancing act it's not about one uh, it's not about omega-3s being good and omega-6 being bad it, both omega-6 and omega-3s are required they form these uh, eicosanoids and as with everything in nutrition it's about balance you need to balance your intake of omega-6 to omega-3s for optimal physical health and hopefully that will lead to optimal mental health as well